<laughs> I'm using like an AI generator <laughs> just because everybody's texting me like weird AI images um, related to sports. And it's so amazing. It's not, not only is it great when you get what you're looking for, but it's also just as awesome when you get something very much not what you anticipated. And you're like, is this is what happens? This is the artificial intelligence I'm worried about taking over. You're using an AI uh image generator editor yeah. no way is it as easy as it should be absolutely not i think it takes a lot of tweaking because just like anything it needs to be literal right and describing something to a computer <laughs> is a very difficult process to get something what you need if you look needs if you're looking for a specific situation like some of the ai generated stuff i see online i'm like how did they prompt this i'm like and and get it what they wanted. So I think it takes a lot of practice to get it to do what you want. And if you're using like celebrities, oftentimes the AI generated is really bad at putting the faces to people. I think they need more famous faces um, because I'm guessing they pull images from, you know, data that's been taken on the internet. So like, it's like the average of all the pictures. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, it just gets its information from them. So like, you know, uh, politicians and stuff, it probably can do a lot better than I was getting sent uh, football stuff. So it's like, if it's a football player and they're not terribly famous for what they look like, they have helmets on and stuff like there's not as much face imaging on the internet. So I'm guessing like, that's why it has a harder time doing it. Cause my buddy sent me one of a picture of Tua Tonga Vailoa uh, at a pizza shop, pulling a pizza out of the oven and like displaying it like a commercial. And he's like, this is the, this is the only job that this bum can get now. Um, Cause he's a Miami fan. So he's really disappointed with last night, but um, the, the face doesn't look anything like Tua. And it's just kind of like, Oh, I guess Tua images don't work. Um, or the AI. Yeah, that's right. Around. We're in the throes of football playoffs now, so a lot of people are gonna be disappointed. Mm. Only one team can win. I don't know if you guys knew that. Um, we can do the sports oh. part of our our show right now. Only one team can win the Super Bowl, guys. Well, once per year. Once it's per been year, a lot well, of them. this is like the fifty eighth. <laughs> it's getting less special every time somebody wins one. It's true. <laughs> it's it's more, true. You know. Like that, we we forget that about sports. The more the more people win championships, the more it's just like and another one and another one. Yeah. Because now, if you're like, uh, I don't know if you know this, but if you go walk up and you're like, I won, I was on the team that won the 2006 Super Bowl. People are like, what? Shut up. Go what away. Is that even? No one yeah. cares. God, no <laughs> yeah. one cares. It's like the Patriots, Tom Brady, the greatest ever to win six Super Bowls. It's like, what? The best thing he's ever done in his life? He's only done six times? <laughs> like, what, kind of, <laughs> what kind of counter are we keeping here? I'm taking more shits yesterday. What? <laughs> Get yeah, out of here. That doesn't, that doesn't sound impressive. Am I supposed to be impressed six times? And he's played how many, how many chances has he had to win? Yeah. We played 23, 24 seasons and he's won six times? He's got wow, he's what in his a, late forties for God's what sake. What a success rate. Well, hopefully he goes on to something a little bit more his style. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe insurance or something. I confuse my priorities. Isn't it supposed to come to me? Yes, this is how it's meant to be. Every little thing flashing on a screen. I don't know what's going on with this song. Like this song refuses to be played at the right time in the right place. And I can't figure out what's going on with it. Brutal. It's going really well. Um, hey, are you doing the version of like not putting your Christmas tree down with t-shirts? <laughs> is that a Christmas shirt? It is. Um, <laughs> no, the reason being is I'm wearing a Christmas shirt because we are doing Christmas at uh, Caitlin's mom's house. Oh, so that's right. we're we're doing our makeup so that's Christmas because kind of we missed it. So 
Yeah. You had delayed Somebody Christmas. Somebody work was telling me about that. Yeah. That they were going to do and that to in January sure, Christmas because everybody was sick. And to make sure that <clears throat> we've done it before in Auburn when Christmas doesn't like link up with a weekend, it's too hard to try to do so much travel in such a little time, like in the middle of a week. So it'll probably be doing the same thing. Um, uh, this coming Christmas, if you will, but, uh, crap, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, something, something, something. No, I lost Christmas. It. Um, Caitlin's uh-huh. family sports, Tom Brady. Nope. Nope. You're going nope. Christmas trees. I don't know. <laughs> I, shut up. <laughs> I don't know. Um, oh, oh yes. Oh, uh, I was going to say is that because it's so important and we're going there this afternoon, uh, your governor decided to cancel right. or push the Bill Steelers game so that I wouldn't miss it because I have this. So that's very that's very convenient. And I was kind of uh, selfishly, I was looking forward to it because I work at 1.30 on Sundays and the Bills game was going to start at 1. So I was like, everybody's going to come in before that. And then I'm going to get in there. I'm just going to coast through the rest of the day. And now it's just going to be busy until four o'clock woe is me yeah um whatever is you yeah it's gonna be rough i'm gonna have to do my job today boo (laughs) and get paid more for it because it's sunday boo (laughs) ew what a frustration sucks that's the worst i know yeah who are we pulling for jeff who are we pulling for in the sports balls in the sports balls oh boy gee willikers um you know what why not have uh the bills prosper they are fun to watch uh so i enjoy that um i wouldn't mind seeing the lions move forward (laughs) that would be a very very interesting turn of events if we could see the lions win a game or two um uh, yeah and i'd be okay the texans would be yeah texans i'm down for forward um you know in a vacuum, I'm okay for the Bills to win because they never have, and the fans have been long suffering. But I just know that if they win one, they're going to be completely insufferable forever. <laughs> it's going to be correct. like, it's going to be brutal. Uh, they're just going to yeah. have to see the merch. You're going to have to hear about it all the time. And why should you know what? Why should Buffalo get anything good? <laughs> That's, that's so sad. They're literally so in the middle of a that. snowstorm as we record <laughs> no. this, and Matt's like, "They get all the good breaks." Yeah, so perpetually in a snowstorm, losing mm-hmm. finals and championships. That's correct. <laughs> yeah, athletes. You know what? They've been spoiled lately. That's no, that's not accurate. They have two sports teams in, in there. They are in a slump <laughs> of slumps on yeah. both sides. So I don't know that that's accurate. Okay, I'm well, okay. Good, People good, just but. They get that they win, but people are just like, oh, thank God. Like, I like finally one for my life, for my dad, you know, for my grandma who's been cheering for him since OJ Simpson and still cheers for OJ Simpson to this day. Nope. Like, you know, we, we it's one, one for grandma, one for the um, juice. <laughs> so I like that you asked me, like, who are you supporting? And then you go, let me tell you why I don't want the Bills to win. <laughs> like, I'm like, I like yeah. how you, you kind of played along, but you did the exact yeah. opposite. I have some. Let me tell you about the lions. Why you should <laughs> Detroit? <get. laughs> well, the more lions get it, on, yeah. the more we see like Tim Robinson, which is kind of hilarious. That's true. He just seems yeah. to always be there. Detroit City. Mm-hmm. I want that one so bad. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Those guys won Oscar or no? What Emmys this Emmys. week? Tim Robinson yeah. and um, Sam. Uh, Sam Richardson. Yeah. Yeah. Good for them. Two real heroes of ours. They really inspired us when we were growing up yeah. to do this podcast. You know, yeah. mm-hmm. um, like those are the Emmys like that you like to see. Like I still will like look at the results of Golden Globes and Emmys and Oscars. And is it really an award ceremony if I don't even understand half of the categories? I'm like, oh, good. This person won. For- I don't know who this person is. I don't know what this movie is. And I don't understand the category, but I'm glad I read into it. Like, it's so, it's so, it might be one of the most pretentious concepts in the world is like, and you did this job the best. So you're the best millionaire out of all of the millionaires. Like, 
it is really pretentious. Everyone getting really, really fancy dressed up. People being upset because comedian. We keep hiring comedians to host ceremonies, and then we get upset when they make jokes about people at the ceremonies. I'm like, do you know how comedy works? Why are we thrown off by the comedy? Like, I don't know. People keep getting butt hurt with comedy. They just need to just need to go straight with it. Here is the award for etc. Keep right. it easy. Like imagine, like show. maybe, yeah. Well, it's got to be even worse because I'd imagine in your industry, there's probably some kind of award show or regional <laughs> award for insurance. I don't know if you would be involved in it, but it's somewhere there's insurance companies in a region that have some kind of award show. <laughs> it's got to be somebody gets roasted. I'm not there, sure that's and true. And they're not but... even famous or rich. Mm-mm. Well, according to dramatic television, there are conferences in every field. That's where a lot of murders happen and affairs. I think that's kind of the linchpin for a lot of drama is, is the award shows for sales and businesses and, and industries. Um, and those people aren't famous at all. And they're just as exciting to watch. Yeah, like I don't even remember. It's kind of weird that we like for that night, it's such a big deal who wins the Oscars or whatever. No, I don't even remember who won. I remember you used to care about it for a little bit. It's because movies suck. Like Movies are terrible these days. Terrible. Like, if you see. look back in, like, the 90s and you look at, like, some of the, like, uh, grouping for Academy Awards, you'd probably say seven of these movies are better than anyone that's won the last, like, five Oscars. Like, it's it's stupid because movies and suck In the Shape now. of Water. Right. It's It's terrible. I hate it. Um, let me see. I'm going to all right. talk about something because I'm going to pull up <laughs> the Academy Awards. Uh, let's see. Best Picture nominees. This would be one of the things. So I wrote down a bunch of lists. Remember last week we were talking about we're going to do segments. Here's my pitch. One of them. Yeah. One of the things would be trivia questions we ask each week. And mm-hmm. we do a best of five. The winner, you know. So just general. Like you like, versus so, me? It's questions you would have had to have gotten right. Be honest with yourself about it, you know? Um, okay. Basically, I have like 12 to 14 different segments. Mm-hmm. I think that we prepare every week. <laughs> okay. Um, we make a wheel. We make a wheel, like Wheel of Fortune. And we only do like four or five of them every week. And it's always a toss-up. Oh, interesting. So, gotcha. So, have the so set, like, but only yeah. do a few of the set every week. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And one of them will be bankrupt, and we just have to end the pod wherever we are. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, that'll be a good way. Keep it 30 to 40 minutes. Um, and just, yeah, kind of roll with that. So let me let me tell you this. Let me tell you this before we get into that. So I pulled up who won Best Picture, or what are the nominees for Best Picture in 1995? I literally picked an arbitrary year. Didn't know what I was going to get. Not arbitrary. All right. I mean, uh, I'll... I'm trying to think, I can't place. I'm gonna think. So there's only like, five nominations, I and right I feel year. like there's 78 nominations these days. Yeah, there's, there's like only 10 five now. nominees. Is that the year of Forrest Gump? That was the year Forrest Gump won. And okay. I'm trying to think. Now, what else I, is in I, that there's definitely era? there's definitely two that I two that I like. Actually, two two movies that I love. One two I've never seen. One of the two I know about, and I'm not I'm not familiar with this fifth one. So there's two two that are pretty solid. Shawshank. Shawshank is one of them. Yes, the Shawshank Redemption. Yeah. You're right. Hard pressed to find awesome. a better three hour commitment <laughs> on a uh, cable television when it popped up on TNT or TBS. Yeah. Or I'll go back to back Shawshank and Forrest Gump. That'll eat up half your day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. If, yeah, if you're watching with commercials, oh man, good luck. Um, I it was Goodfellas it was probably before that, right? Early '90s. Yeah, I believe Goodfellas would have been before. This right, one's um, this uh, so Pulp Fiction, Dumb and Dumber. Pulp, no, Pulp Fiction, Fiction was up right. was up for for yeah. Best Picture. Okay, so then right. another great movie, and then this one I know about, never watched it. Four Weddings and a Funeral. Um, I believe it. it's fairly popular. You have seen it or never seen it? No. Oh, because you were shaking your head and said never seen it. I did. Mm-hmm. I've never even seen um, Four Weddings in person. 
All right, we're going to put a rim shot in there. But don't. Uh, um, and then last but not least, Robert Redford in Quiz Show. Quiz Show? That I've heard about. That seems like to oh, be. Oh, maybe he's uh, not in it. Maybe he was part of like the directing or producing crew. But yeah, I don't know. It's probably like about the Quiz Darling. Show. That was like the writer, the ner- writing, writing nerds kind of movie, I think, or something like that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. You know a lot about movies. You know what's awesome? It's, it's no sh- one. Yeah, that's correct. Um, and right. I promise I won't Fair. look into any other ones. But the for best song, the winner was The Lion King, Can You Feel It Love Tonight by Elton John. Mm-hmm. Two of the nominees were The Circle of Life by Elton John as featured in The Lion King. And, Ka- and Hakuna Matata, sung by Elton Damn. John, featured in The Lion King. Homeboy was stacking you. his deck. Stacking the deck. He had a th- he had a 60% chance of winning if it was winning by random. I bet he got one, two, and three. And still, Lion King not up for best picture, huh? It would be today. Oh, yeah. Plan. they. Yep. Doesn't matter. They would. Have, I, they would have put it up. If you, I feel like it would have been fair for it to be in there, but that's probably a ten-year-old me thinking it was a good movie. <laughs> it holds. It, <laughs> people still watch it, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think. You know, it starts off classic Disney fashion with a child. Someone who's dies. In, yeah, mm-hmm. parent. Mm-hmm. Real quick. Someone dying. We won't that's even tell you about damaged. the tragedy. We're gonna lay it out for you. Yeah. Um, I had a dream. I couldn't remember if it was a lion or a bear mm-hmm. in the dream, but there was some ferocious animal. Um, I, I don't know. The dream evolved to where it was like some people in my life in different spots of my life, but all coming together. We were all outside. All of a sudden, there was either I can't remember. We'll say for the purpose of this story, it's a lion because it it works, you know. But it was just a lion there, and we were like, "Holy fuck! Holy fuck! Don't move! Don't move!" And I just started running. <laughs> it just started chasing me. Good. And I cut through a little shack, kind of like if I started playing the game Dead by Daylight, where there's like a couple entrances and a window. So it's like, oh, I can do this. You know, I can use the mechanics of this to run away. And then another guy was behind me. So I just like didn't know it was happening. So I just went around the other side of him <laughs> and watched him get attacked. I was like, what does that say about me? Because so I just turned around and I was like, thank God I'm safe. <laughs> it's like, because I, I think in my dream, I could have warned that guy. <laughs> I just didn't. Wow. So I was like, that's very selfish of me. Um, you know, I'll say I knew it was a dream and that that guy's life wasn't real. and didn't mean anything. Yeah. Yeah. That's usually how dreams just, work, right? Usually you're I'm very go cognizant that. of the fact that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, sure. Speaking of life not meaning anything, uh, <laughs> I went to the doctor <laughs> this week. So, yeah, yeah, we were talking last week about. Just get one thing, you know, that was your advice. Get one thing that you can like kind of hang your hat on. <laughs> yeah. What's one and thing it wasn't I'm that... not terrible at? Yeah. Um, so I haven't gotten my lab work, all the blood tests and all the lipids and all the stuff that would probably be like, hey, mm-hmm. do a couple things differently. But I was very honest uh, with the woman. She's like, well, you know, because I was talking to her about my anxiety, about my health and stuff like that. And. You know, and then she's like, well, she did all my, my numbers, the blood pressure. She's like, yeah, I mean, well, you're not overweight. I mean, your, your numbers are um, are good. Like my pulse, my, my resting heartbeat was like 55 or something like that. And I was like, holy shit. A few years ago, it was like 100. <laughs> I was like, that's like pretty good. I was like, and then I looked it up when I got home. I was like, 40-year-old man, you did get that chart where you go like whatever your age is and the gotcha. um, where your thing is. And guess what? I am an athlete. <laughs> it says like excellent to athlete. And I was like, no shit. I guess I can stop. Wow. Worrying about it. So that's the one I hang my hat on. Whereas okay. like three years ago, I was poor. <laughs> 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 my father would have been considered poor health. So I'll, I'll give myself that. And plus the woman like, um, here's a breakthrough that I, I am going to, well, I need to go to the allergist, get some of that stuff done. But she's like, have you ever mm. been to like a psychiatrist? <laughs> I was like, no. Well, no. I mean, I don't think she meant it like, you need to go. But I was just talking right. to her about some of the anxieties I had about my health and stuff. And she's like, well, I mean, I could prescribe you something, you know. And I was like, eh. 
I was like, I've done like therapy stuff. I've never been to like a psychiatrist. Why don't don't, don't you do that? And I was like, yeah, why don't I do that? You know, I get this fantastic insurance. Why don't I go talk to somebody who can give me drugs too? So I'm going to do it. I don't know. I don't know what give me better drugs than this person. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mm. But it was like one of those nights. And I had like the night before, I just barely slept. Again, anxiety about health stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. But then she sort of made me, she did the thing. It's great because when people tell you like, well, you don't have anything to worry about. And it's like, I know, I know that, but just like, I know that, but I don't, you know, you're right. I'll just stop right. my feelings. That's right. I should just stop. I'll stop. I'll stop. I'll just do that's that. Why, you know? That's like, why it's hard to have a conversation about anxiety because mm-hmm. it can get frustrating real quick yeah. and i know because once you get through it and you look back you're like ah, i, I kind of feel silly how i was so anxious about stuff like this thing and now i'm okay and but in that moment it was bad <laughs> i didn't li- i did not like it and i would not like to do it again so i'm right there with you <laughs> I, just, I agree um that it'll be okay probably most of the time but, <laughs> right, but, but then like- she was like She's 61, this woman, mm-hmm. uh, and she, or she might be older, but she's like, yeah, I just, uh, I just got my MD or just graduated med school at 61. And I was like, that's fucking awesome. Like she changed, wow. she was like a nurse for a long time, what? but she didn't want to like do that anymore. I told her uh, like a lot of my friends are nurses, maybe don't want to do it anymore. That kind of thing. And I get it. She's like, yeah, I just went back to school. And she's like, but you know, then she did the, you'll be all right. You know, uh, I've survived two cancers. I've already had a cardiac arrest. And I was like, I was like. Oh fuck! Okay, yeah, I see where you're I coming am. from. Here I am. Yeah, yeah <laughs> you're, like, you're right. I'm a pussy ass bitch yeah. who needs to stop whining. <laughs> you know, like, I'm sad that I drank a lot of beer in my 30s. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I get it. Yeah. So I mean, it comes from that place of. I mean, you know, we can't control it all. I get it, and I have. I would say I've been getting better at it. Like, I don't know if I sort of mentioned it in the New Year's thing, but like. I'm just like writing it out now when I get anxious instead of like trying to find necessarily ways to like not to distract myself. I kind of just sit there and feel it now and like make myself feel it. Okay. And I don't know if it's like a version of exposure therapy or just trying to get better at it. And I don't know where it's going to take me, but How there's something to be said about just writing it out. How do you have to do that? And, yeah. Like, like getting through like it, it is like it passes faster? I think I don't know. Yeah, actually, in a way, it lasts I feel longer. More, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It might, yeah, it might last longer because I'm in it. But I think the peaks aren't as bad. Maybe I don't know. I, I guess I haven't like at a full on like heart pounding. Like I'm gonna die, panic attack, which is good. Just more like, but the, the anxiety might last longer, or I feel unsettled or restless. Mm-hmm. I'll take it. <laughs> I don't know. But I, my huh. my thought is, if I do it more, I'll just get better at it instead of avoiding it, you know? Right. Okay. Ah, oh, horse shit! <laughs> I don't know why. So. <laughs> Perfect. I guess. That's what I say to get myself through. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So we'll see. Uh, after my trip to... Uh, Ithaca, I'm going to go visit the psychiatrist. And I'm going to say, what's this about? It'll probably be a week. I'm feeling real good, too. And I'll be like, I don't even know why I'm here, Doc. Things are great. <laughs> I'm good for all the rest of the time. Oh, no. I figured it out. Don't do I that. I figured it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't do that. Don't um, do that. Yeah, I really don't. I don't I'm going to have to look it up because I don't really know what it's all about. Therapy versus psychiatry. I guess they're going to check to see if I have something yeah. physically wrong with me. Is that part of it? With my brain? I don't know. Well, who knows? No, I mean, I've gone to, I've gone to counselors and I've gone to like actual therapists and psychologists. So psychologists seem to approach it a little bit differently. Therapists, it's more of like talking stuff on the surfaces. If you have therapists, I feel like are more on the idea of like helping you get through specific events. And whereas psychologists are more of like 
digging into the intricacies of why your brain keeps doing things. Like, so that I found was very different. The first time I went to a psychologist, um, or I guess this, yeah, psychologist, sorry. I couldn't remember psychologist, psychiatrist. Uh, So the psychologist was more of like, he kept asking why, like, okay, and why does that happen? Okay, and not not just blatantly being like, yeah, but why? But why? But why? Like a little kid wondering why he can't go to uh, go to his friend's house, but more of like, okay, and how do you react from that? Now, why do you think that you react that way? Okay, so break down that. That response is basically fight or flight and blah, blah, blah. He goes, but let's break this down. And it really was interesting. Like he did it with it straight up with like a whiteboard of like really? drawing like stuff like, and I'm like, and it, it helped me. Like, I'm like, Ooh, I like this because you're kind of like structuring and over like being uber analytical, almost like what my anxiety is trying to do, but it, like making sense of it and putting it on paper was a really interesting way to handle it. So that was, that was something I really enjoyed, but yeah, I mean, it's wild because I guess that's the reason why they have the occupation they do is like, you can go in there and you're like, like, they'll just kind of start things off, ask you a question. And then it's like, okay. And then once they go, once they, once you say something that's like not normal, they're like, there it is. Okay. Let's break this thing down. And, yeah. <laughs> but it, it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel uh, intrusive or like accusatory. It's weird because you're talking to someone who's just not in your personal life, has nothing to do, doesn't know you. Um, is literally analyzing based on the information you are giving them. And it's a really interesting experience. The first couple visits. Um, I think that you get more out of those than maybe subsequent ones where it is more of just like, Oh, how did this go? How did this go? So even if you go to a handful of sessions, I think it it might make you start thinking of different things. Yep. That'd be ideal. I mean, and it's like, I kind of know what I would talk. I mean, it's just, I, you know, it's very popular around here. It must be because they didn't have an appointment and she's like, well, all the doctors ha- are busy booked till May, but we have a nurse practitioner um, and he can see you. And fa- I was like, that's okay. I'm, that'll be all right. He's probably knows a lot more than I do. <laughs> Still, I, guess, I don't know why they're throwing this nurse practitioner under the bus. Like he's kind of an idiot. He right. barely, I'll be he honest barely with you. nurse <laughs> yeah. practitioner sounds kind of fucking stupid, doesn't it? Like, yeah, yeah, I, it's been that, but it is comical because that's how like with like a, any physician situation, I remember that he's yeah. like, same thing. It's like, well, the doctor can see you in August. The nurse practitioner is available at three today. And you're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> like, um, I came to you with a health issue. I'm going to take the B squad instead of waiting seven months for the number one guy. So I'll take B squad. And I assume if B squad says this guy's in trouble, he'll fit me in with a squad a little bit better. Like, <laughs> I feel like that's the real opportunity. Get my foot. in. We the door. all just, yeah, we all just deal with nurses in our whole life. The doctor just comes in to be like, yep, the nurse didn't totally fuck it up for some reason, even though the right, nurses do yeah. all the work. <laughs> they say and I, I get paid less for it. Just, yeah. Like I gig. went to the, the, some of the doctor situations are so great. It's like, I'm sure they're doing something else, but I imagine that I'm disrupting this guy's surgery. I assume that's why he's only spending 45 seconds with me, but I went there for like an issue with my shoulder and he was in the room for <laughs> literally like 30 seconds. And then he was like, well, um, probably should do some PT. And, uh, if you want, I'm give you a cortisone shot. And I'm like, if I want, I'm like, do, do you know if that's even going to help? Well, like, well, <laughs> you want one? And I go, yeah, yeah, I, go, I want one. It didn't help. Spoiler alert. It, the cortisone did not, did not help. And the PT did, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, doctors just like, yeah, you want a shot? You want to, you want a morphine lollipop? <laughs> right. Yeah, whatever you got, whatever you got laying around, Doc. It's not, it's not a big deal. You got any of those samples? I have like the, the platter, you have a plat, like a kind of like I was at Applebee's ordering meds. You got the sampler? That's cool. Got any Percocets? Well, ooh. Um. So here's, I was brainstorming. Now let's talk like we're real people okay. doing a show. That's this is a terrible. segment called Two People Talking About the Thing That They're Doing. Pull behind the curtain. Good. 
you know, welcome, welcome, strange fam, to conversations we would have if we communicated off of the podcast. Hmm. But so we, you know, the idea of being structured seems fun. Um, I mean, it involves prep, which we don't always do a lot of. Sometimes we just show up <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> small talk. Um, unfortunately, uh, one of the segment ideas I have is called Make Small Talk. But it would be, it couldn't just be like this. It'd have to, I think we'd have to like really, <laughs> you'd have to start specifically with a weather thing, a, uh, you know, maybe a, a medium um, scale news story. Nothing more than that. Like a, okay. a sports, a sports playoff game <laughs> being moved, you know. So it's, it's within our wheelhouse. But some of the, I mean, some of the segment ideas. So again, I would, I envision like a Wheel of Fortune spinneroonie deal. So we, you know, each week it could be different. Or maybe we do want some every week, um, a couple things. But I figure it usually takes us half an hour to get to anything, and then after that, <laughs> we got a few, we could do mm -hmm. a few spins. Mm -hmm. So scroll them is easy. Sure, it was easy, but. I think it'd be good if we didn't do it every week because I think at some point we're going to run out of people that I remember. I can already see that happening. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I like the if I had a million dollars deal. <clears throat> like, you know, maybe we always have something in the chamber for what would I do this week if I was or whatever. Consider unlimited money. What would I buy? But it's um, got to be <clears throat> there's got to be parameters that for. we can't that we can't address. No house, no car bullshit, none of that stuff. It's got to be something like yeah, <clears throat> the deep dives of having a lot of money. Yeah, basically. I mean, if it was a house or a car, it'd have to be like a compelling story as to why or, you know. Yeah. And we're nothing if not compelling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, relationship advice, like I read it, you know, because I think we're in a position now to definitely give relationship advice. A hundred percent. Um, some hot wrecks. We've done that before. Maybe one called good, the bad and the ugly. So consider maybe either from the week or the month, like a few stories or a couple instances in your life that you could fit under those. I mean, mm. however long you want to go back to it, you know, um, or with a theme, maybe we pick a theme or however you want to do it. You know, this is your, this is your space to be creative and to use your freedoms. Okay. Just have right. fun with it though. Two Let's truths and a structure. lie. Structure, that's fun because it brings up freedoms. You know? Yeah. Oh, okay. Structured yeah, freedoms. that's a good point. Two truths and a lie. That's kind of fun, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, the trivia. So we each bring five questions. We'll just do a best of five. Whoever wins gets uh I don't know, we'll tally Wait, something up. Hold on. How is this work? How is this trivia gonna work? We each bring five questions. We'll have them ready if it comes up. Okay. Uh, but I think it's got to be, it's got to be questions that you would have gotten without looking up. You know what I mean? Or you got to be like, if it was a trivia, you would have gotten it right. So it can't. I don't want it to be like the 1978 Golden Globe for whatever, where I would have had to look it up. You know, it's got to be something that I don't know is how this general more... trivia. I don't know how this works with, like, am I just quizzing you? Yeah, and then I would do the same to you. And we would do, okay. uh, we each give each other five questions. Whoever gets the most, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Well, what we could do is we could come loaded with, each of us could have at least two topics in our back pocket. So Ooh. five questions about one topic, five about the other. And so when it comes to trivia time, whoever's being trivia would be given two topics. So they get a choice of which topic Ooh. of questions they want to address. That's a great idea. Thank you. I'm helping. <laughs> Consider me an executive producer. Dude, we have so much homework to do. <laughs> yeah, this is stressful. I was thinking it, it well, but you think, you know, once we get all these things going, you know, each week we'll only have to refresh a few topics or a few things. You'd the think. other ones we'll still have on the back burner. You'd you know? think. Um, so conversation dice, you can get those back in. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Or the three words. T-shirt concepts. We kind of fell off with that, but I enjoyed it. Maybe I exhausted all the ones I had, but I bet I can come up with more. <laughs> um, ah, crap. Once we went full, full fear and, yeah. Uh, um, 
This is what yeah, I like. Am I the asshole? On Reddit, we can diagnose if somebody's the asshole. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm aware of that. Uh, I'm aware of that one. Or I can ask Reddit question. So, um, you know, like version Yahoo answer, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, make small talk. And then a uh, maybe a crazy news story. That's more like standards, a guilty pleasure. But yes, yeah, so there's like a bunch of stuff here. I'll send it to you in email. But do any of those seem Great. like no's right away? Or do you have anything? Do you like do you like the idea of spinning a wheel? Well, I love it. Of an actual wheel being uh-huh, spun, uh-huh. of course. Ding, um, ding, ding. All right, always been a big proponent. Wheel of Fortune, um, Price is Right, anything that involves wheels, uh, I'm usually all for. Uh, the Reddit, the Reddit stuff is going to be the hardest one to not make it too hammy. Um, so, am I the asshole? Maybe, um, maybe do that. But I, I do like um, exploring that because that's just. Folks, if you're not familiar with Reddit, I mean, what a what a magical world that doesn't get enough props on the internet. Like, it, it's take all of like any curiosities you have, and someone's been curious about that upfront on Reddit. Like, it is the hub of just complete chaos of questions, of opinions, of anything, any type of thoughts. Like, there's there's subreddits, um, like never categorical feel- areas for like. <laughs> Like for like weird, like people like, what was one, one that I saw recently? It was like the best, worst superhuman powers and stuff. Like people have weird categories and everyone just keeps contributing to it. And they're like, who comes up with this stuff? Like Reddit is a fantastic place, but yeah. Um, I think I, I, I like it. I like, I like the idea to keep things on some sort of track. Um, I, probably should do some effort in trying to come up with a couple ideas too to put on the wheel because i think the more things we have the better off um we are and we can kind of see what each thing what path it takes down because time structure is going to be the biggest one so right now i don't know if three would be sufficient or if we would have to do seven on a show i don't know i know um that's the thing is our uh we we can get tangential and sometimes we don't so yeah, uh, I'm all for it. Um, I think we have to. Well, put I don't know if you know this. Good spins on stuff. What? Don't know if I know. Yeah. What. Well, next year, next year, next week will be our 52nd episode, which would put us right in that year mark. Wow. Right in that. Right in the wow. wheelhouse of a year of doing something. Wow. wow. Uh, yeah. It's basically, I bailed, every I week bailed on most things for a year. By this time, I know. Are wow. we proud? Are we proud, boys? About this? <laughs> we, about I the, am having... not, not necessarily <laughs> proud of the product itself per se, but proud that I'm still doing it because I just don't like I bail on stuff, and this obviously is doing something for me because i'm sticking with it now there it's a 100 percent accountability thing too i could let myself down all the time it doesn't matter it's more so that i'm like uh excuse me having the podcast with someone else helps me it's it's kind of a ping pong match you know it's like all right matt wants to do this and matt at some point you might be like well i don't want to tell jeff that i can't do this or i'm not feeling up to it so i you know i'll do it and so like it's probably going back and forth a little bit like that. Um, Cause there are some weeks where it's like, ah, boy, do I want to record? Am I up to it? But usually 10, 15 minutes into the recording, I'll be like, yeah, no, I'm glad I did this. <laughs> so, but that's most things that I do in life. Do I want to go to this concert? Uh, and then you go to the concert. And you're like, why did I not want to go to the concert? So I know just get out the door. Just yeah, start it, it is. It is. It's, well, I guess that's kind of what this whole thing was initially. That was the idea. It was like uh, to g- do something and uh, to have its, pur- I mean, its purpose is us catching up. And I mean, we've, we've, we've now hung out in person twice and yeah, I mean, without the pod wouldn't have happened. Safe to say. Never. Just w- wouldn't have I happened. would never, never have seen it. <laughs> I know. Yeah. So, See guys, so if you just want a relationship with somebody, just podcast with them for like 40 weeks and then you might hang out in person. 
That's correct. It's, it'll right. work. It's a pretty um, gradual uh, system. Yeah. It is kind of, I could say it's, you know, it's proud word. I mean, you're right. The content, I mean, there's definitely weeks where I record and I'm like, ah, that was doo doo. Or I don't feel like one thing I want to do is I still feel like, I don't know. I don't still know if I'm fully being myself or saying, I feel like I catch myself sometimes and I'm like, what am I, who am I worrying about hearing whatever? And I'm like, sometimes I don't feel like I'm being a hundred percent myself as if I would have been like gaming with somebody offline, you know, or saying whatever I wanted to. And I'm like, I can, I have more, you know, I, I got more room in these pants, you know, especially under the zipper, if you know what I mean, plenty of room. <laughs> it's, it's not tight there at all. I got more room to grow. I'll you, tell you uh, metaphorically, that's a metaphor, that's a me but, um, <laughs> I would like to, you know, grow more <laughs> and chill more, <laughs> basically, in this my, year. Yeah. Uh, but it's been, it has been cool. I mean, whatever travels or whatever's been going on, we've been able to, like, manage to get out an episode every week. And there is something to be said yeah, about that for the um, first year. I mean, now we're coming up with some way to do this podcast, we think. But, right, you know, maybe. maybe you exercised it, you know. Someday somebody will look back on this first year of episodes when we're like year four and be like, let me hear. I want to hear how it was, though, before it was like this. And they're going to be like, oh, it's mm -hmm. kind of the same. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, uh, I don't know. Like, I don't think it's necessarily all about being as open as you can because more, more in the idea that like, just like what you said, it's like, yeah, I'm being truthful about my feelings towards stuff, but blabbing on about like everything under the sun and trying to be so a hundred percent forward about stuff sometimes can be stressful in itself. And it's like, and if it's adverse to what you're looking to do, then don't do it. So like, um, I guess on, on, on a lot of things is it's been a way to just, you know, catch, catch up and, more importantly, it's like not have to worry about, I don't know. I don't know how I'm trying to put it. It's like, it's, it's interesting. I, I often forget that people are listening to us. Um, yeah. <laughs> like I, I forget what this concept is, but I mean, it's been, it's, it's interesting because it's like just a ton of small talk, but not forced small talk. Although small talk feels like that's something that's forced. So it's just, I don't know, it's mindless chatter. And sometimes you need mindless chatter to make sense of stuff, um, to make the world not seem so stressful because it's not work and it's not, um, it's not family. It's not home ownership. It's not, you know, judging yourself. It's, it's just something to put my mind at ease rather than worry about its success. So, you know, I'm kind of, I'm really curious as to what people who listen to the pod, like what they get out of it. Like, I, honestly, like, I, I, I'm serious. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I, I don't know. I'm not a fan of the podcast. I don't like that's, I know what's going to be on every so episode, but like, do people listen to it and just go like, I learned to learn about Jeff and Matt because I know one of them, or is it more of like. I don't know. It's just two guys chatting. And for some reason that's appealing to me. Like, uh, I don't know. I listen to like, that's kind of what it is for like sports talk radio. For me, I listen to sports talk radio so much. And it's not because I am like intrigued by hot takes. I know everything that's going to be discussed. Cause I've heard the last three shows talk about it. Like no one in sports talk radio is uh, the sports takes themselves is not. Everyone's got the take. Like there's only two takes you can really have on stuff. Like, so it's not creative, but for some reason, the mindless chatter is just appealing to me because I understand it. It's like, oh yeah, I kind of think that way too. So I don't know if people just like joy, enjoy hearing. Oh yeah. I think a different way. And oh yeah, I do think that way too. I'm glad someone else hears that. And like, they don't care about what we're actually telling each other or talking about. It's just, I don't know. I don't even know what I'm talking about right now. I just want to go lay down. Yeah. 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 I mean, it is like very, in a way, we're white noise, very, very white noise. Yeah. <laughs> but it, I, it, it, there is, I mean, you're right. It's, 
how often do we create space in our life for like <laughs> just like making yourself talk to somebody for an hour? Right. Probably not enough, I would say. Or talking like how much of your relationships is literally texting and that's it. Oh like, my lord. 100%. Like, uh I have a friend in my life and she was a friend in Austin like in our group of friends and our whole relationship is memes and we'll text here and there like maybe like every couple weeks about life stuff and I'm like I was like I we should meet up in person in one of these. Like I for, almost forgot what you look like, or it's like, it's this weird relationship of like, you just talk to people or text them and like, it's this. And then like, it's weird to not talk to somebody or like, I don't even know like how to interact with some people sometimes. Cause we haven't had conversations in forever. Um, not that I wouldn't, I mean, it'd be fine, but um, like, I mean, I think there is, something I still don't like talking like, on the like phone. Conversational relationship. I still don't like talking. It's, on the it's phone. like reserved for parents. I think exactly. That's literally it. Um, but even still, it's just, yeah, I don't know. It's weird because like talking on the phone is, yeah, it's just, Oh, like I just sit there. Would you rather video chat than talk on the phone? With somebody? Yeah. Oh yeah. hundred percent because <sighs> tone and facial expression, like those things matter. Um, like, uh, what am I trying to say? Uh, what the hell's the word for it? Body movements and stuff. What is that called? Like when Charades. you're talking. No, damn it. Um, <laughs> what the hell? Like body language, body emotes. language, body language. So <laughs> Jesus, body language matters when having a conversation because you want to see what someone's facial expression is and, and such like that. And also <clears throat> for some reason, it helps a lot better with tone intention of what you're saying like text is the ultimate of you gotta like the tone can be taken the wrong way um like when people are like i hate that i get one word responses in text i'm like i kind of do too but then i also go like well why do, like why do we have to have like okay that sounds good thanks bye like why is okay not an acceptable response it's just an acknowledgement like that's why i do like the yeah. thumbs up uh that you can like when you can thumbs up someone's message to you because it's like i have nothing to mm -hmm. add there's nothing for me to say but if i put okay you're probably going to be offended that i just put okay so i'll just like do okay right but at what the same time it's like if um if you were face to face yeah you probably would say more but what like all right doesn't matter. Like, isn't the fact that a text should be a collected thought because you can just use your, choose your words wisely, as opposed to in a discussion where you probably are rambling on to say the exact same thing. So, but I like the ramble on, um, my, t my line of work being remote. Um, I'm on camera more than I probably even have to be, uh, because, oh, yeah, because I choose to, like, I'm allowed to like, just make a lot of things, just phone calls via teams, um, through the computer. But I tell, like, I want to be on camera because it's like, give me more human interaction. I like typing and texting and everything. It's like that. Cause to be honest with you, oftentimes in like texts, I, I bail. Like if, after three exchanges, I'm like, can you stop texting me now? Like, I'm not going to lie. It sounds really mean, but like, I want to have a conversation with someone, but I don't want to use the phone, but, and I don't want to text. So it's like, yo, if you still have a lot that you want to chat about, I'd rather someone be like, Hey man, let's get together and have a video chat. Like maybe that's the new thing I should start pushing on people. Meet me in a Google chat. You want to talk about something? Meet yeah, me in a Google chat. I, I do that with my, with uh, my friends too. Uh, like my close friends who do video chats, um, they will watch a show usually, whatever, like the challenge or survivor, but then like before or after we'll just shoot the shit on whatever. Okay. Um, cause it, but then, yeah, then it's like, you're creating, I mean, you're creating that space intentionally. Um, yeah, it's just weird. I mean, text in a way you have to like, it's a weird thing. Cause do you ever find yourself, especially with like, it probably works that way in Facebook Messenger or Instagram where it's like, ah, I haven't responded to this person's text, but I don't, I'm not ready to, or I don't, I don't know what I want to say. And then you can then see you somebody is active on Facebook or Instagram. And it's like, but they, they, you should be, allow them like, 
I feel with like a text, there's too much of like, you have to respond. Like if you're on your phone, then you have to respond or something like that. And you don't have room or space to like be thoughtful or to think about something. Or sometimes you don't want to respond, not because you don't like the person, but you don't even know what to say, or you're still thinking about stuff. And it's a weird space combined with apps about that. I think people can read too much into, or you can yourself read too much into. And it's like, geez, I texted this person like six days ago and I haven't heard anything from them, but man, they keep going out all the time. <laughs> like just, and they're going to get yeah, texts like, I mean, sorry, I've been busy. It's like, no, I see that. Yeah, you're like, <laughs> yeah, you've been. Like. Um, but that should be it, okay, I guess. Is what yeah, I'm saying. It, exactly. It, it it should be. And it's tough because, right, it's, it's, oh, I'm glad this person messaged me, but I don't have, like, the strength or, like, it's a bigger conversation than being able to text you back. Like if I have to write back and I'm enthusiastic about it. So in the case in point, uh, Billy, one of our listeners. So Billy, if you're listening to this, Billy sent me, um, he listened to our hot rec from our last episode and texted me, um, uh, a recommendation by Corey Wong, uh, my hot rec. So like he, yep. So he went back and um, was telling me like, you know, he says it's good for downtimes, uh, yoga, et cetera. And then he sent me something else, um, you know, saying more in the same jazz, funk, holy shit, crazy musicianship, musicianship vibe. Happy listening, my dude. Have a great day. So like, I want to respond because Billy, I'm very, very appreciative of that. But like, I didn't because like at the moment I got it, I was kind of like busy in something uh, with work. And then anything that happens during my work day, when work finally ends, I kind of forget about it. And so now I'm realizing like, Oh, I really want to respond to Billy, but also I don't know how to respond. I'm just appreciative of it. Like, but I feel like if I put, thanks man, like then that's not enough or something. So like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, it's stressful. It's stressful because it's like, it's not, yeah, it's not a conversation because a conversation would have been awesome because I could have shown, you know, talked and, and expressed my thanks and stuff. And it's not an email, it's text. So text should be responded quickly, like you say, is the is the expectation almost. And it's like, ah, there always has to be a response. Like, it's the worst, man. Text texting has not helped our society really. <laughs> like, it really hasn't. <laughs> it's made relationship. I'm always like uh, structure awkward. Yeah. Um, I, I'm always floored. So like, for example, a friend I was talking about who we basically have a text relationship, which is fine. But sometimes she'll text like a bunch of stuff, whether it's about, you know, a question about somebody she was dating or something like that. Then she'll like give me all this information and background. And it's like a lot, like, like speed. And I'm like, holy shit. And I was like, I wish I would rather just talk about this. Like, Cause now I have to respond in text form and I'll like, and I'm like, this is too much texting for me. <laughs> like, I want to just say it and I don't know what to do. Like, <laughs> uh, how to like, how to say, you know, and it's like, and so sometimes I might not respond right away. Cause I'm like, Oh, this is a thing now. Just, this is just physically a thing. Like now I have to do this, like type all this stuff out. I've, I've done, have you ever found yourself like, I'll write a response, but I'll do it in notes, but I don't want them to think that I just wrote it in notes and copy paste. So I'll break it up and I'll do, do a little bit, copy paste. I'll give it a second. Then a little bit copy paste. Cause I got to, I want to pace it out. Like I wasn't spending like four hours trying to respond. Like we're pen pals or like, I was like <laughs> writing a thoughtful response. Oh, no, you, I'm getting a look not. of that's fucking insane. Absolutely not. No, that is insane. Oh, and I'll no. tell you why, because it's fucking annoying as what it is. Good. You, you thought out a response. And as an adult, you wrote all of the information, then sent it once. I don't need my phone blowing up six times because you're making it seem oh, like yeah. you're typing on the go. Typing on the go is annoying. Have a full thought. If you have a full thought, I don't need to be. You're not keeping me in anticipation because you took longer to respond in one full thought. Because there are some people that go like, ha ha ha, enter, LOL, enter. You know what? <laughs> I thought about that too, enter. And I think it's really funny, enter. Stop, stop blowing up my phone. Stop it. Write out your full Maybe thing. It's, like, yeah, it's almost like, well, it's like, is it, do I have, yeah, I wonder if there's an idea of it pops. being in the moment or thought out. Two what? Two, two messages tops, then you have to wait for a response. 
Do we'll like see, yeah, I mean. anyone, if you hit enter more than two times before someone else gets to respond, you are doing it wrong. Stop it. Slow down, people. Hmm. But nobody, isn't it uh, getting a novel though? T- text it to you. Just rough. it's fine. I'd rather like, no, that than the full... so. So hold on, your but your justification, Matt, is that it like see that would be annoying is getting a full long text. But if that full long exact same text comes in multiple bubbles, that's nice. That doesn't make sense. Hmm. You're still giving the same stupid why... long text. Yeah. I wonder why I have a complex about that. That's weird. Like maybe I feel like it's got to be in the moment or something, and like that's the way. So somewhere in my brain, it's like. Oh, text has to be in the moment and it has to be like lively and it can't be thought out. Because you're thinking of it as like a conversation. Right. Like more of like just chatting in the same room with someone. And it's more people do think about as a conversation versus like an email. Let us know. Let us know in the comments in one long comment thread. I I actually beg, I I think it's because of this because you know what came before texting? was instant messenger. And I think people, some people are treating it exactly like instant messenger. And it's not exactly like instant messenger. Instant messenger was more of like a conversation because we're all typing and doing that back and forth. That was fine. Texting is not mobile instant messenger for me. It's not, it's more close to a bridge, like a a slightly more fast and capable email system as opposed to an IM system. Yeah, you know what's funny too is like if you're in like if I'm in Instagram chat or whether with somebody because it'll sell it say like active or in chat now, <laughs> like so we don't treat it like a conversation though because all all of a sudden someone will send a message and then it won't be like all right I'm out of here you know it'll just nothing just crickets and then it's like <laughs> all of a sudden eight hours later it's like oh yeah totally and it's like oh you know, I guess you didn't have to respond to that part now <laughs> like, right later like it's like it's like you want to acknowledge that that person said that, but instead of saying like, okay, I got to go. I, I, I'm not going to talk anymore. You just stop. <laughs> Don't acknowledge it until later. That's a very bizarre way to have a conversation. Like if you had Instagram chats in real life and be like, oh yeah. And then this uh, other time at the bar, oh my God, I got to tell you about this. Oh yeah. Um, did I tell you about that time I was in uh, Vermont? Right. Like at that ski trip, person walks away. Right. <laughs> like, in reality, majority of any oh, yeah. group chat yeah. is, this is funny. I saw this. You should see this. This is funny. I saw this. You should see this. And that's all it is. But like, that's, that's fine because those group chats, it's like, that's all it is. That's its real purpose. But yeah, you don't, don't text to have a conversation. Texting is like, like if like for like plans and stuff, I might preemptive with the, Hey, do you have any plans for this date? I'm doing this. Do you want to do this? Like, I'm not going to say, Hey, what are you up to this day? Like my dad used to do, my dad will do that with us. Like, what are you doing this day? I don't know why. Well, are you going to be busy? I, why, what, what is the point of your question? This isn't the question. Like, and it takes like four prompts to say like, well, what I was going to say is that we're going to do this. Do you want to come? That could have been your lead off question. The other ones were just annoying prefaces to see like, I don't to, to get your answer before asking me the question. Like it's stop it. Think that before is weird, we talk. Whenever somebody asks, just, yeah, just prompt like yourself. Like, say what, you say what you're like, going to say. Yeah. What does that mean? And I kind of rush that too. Cause yeah, my dad's like, Hey, hey uh, what are you up to? And I'm like, nothing, even though I'm doing something at the time, but I'm like, right. I don't know if you really want to know what I'm up to. Like, right. But it doesn't oh, I'm, matter what I'm doing. I'm doing. That's the problem. And you know that it doesn't matter yeah. what you're doing right now. But then I'm, or does, you know, maybe, but it, then, then afterwards, like once I use that to see like, oh, nothing so that he can be like, oh, what do you, you know, then you want to, whereas, and then maybe I'll be like, oh, cool. Yeah. Well, I just got back from the gym. I was going to do, you know, I was going to do this and that, <laughs> whereas I could have answered that up front, but I didn't because I just like right. made, but cleared the runway the, for whatever he right, wanted but to the problem, ask. The I problem guess. was, is that it was, what are you up to? Well, what are, is there a context you're like looking for? Because like, that's the problem. So you don't answer then because you're like, yeah. what are we even getting into? <laughs> so yeah, it's, I, I, I just like things to be more straightforward just in, in chatter. And I think that's what text should be is be like, just, 
Just be more straightforward, folks. Stop, stop chatting. What are you up to, like, son? Whoop, whoop, whoop. Walking around with no pants on, Dad. I was gonna get in the shower, and my balls right. are hanging out. Right. And I was just and thinking about recently. how they're hanging lower than they used to. Right. And I pooped That's recently. I was thinking um, about kind of yeah. thirsty, but like, cause. I don't know. It's just like, let me, I have a hard time with it because a lot of times it's just like, I don't know. I have a weird complex concept where it's like, I want to be left alone sometimes, but I'm also like, want to hang out with people. So like, I don't like answering (laughs) questions. I like being around and engaging with people, but I'm really bad at like answering questions because it's, I don't know. I got to work on that really like a, a, a lot. Like I just, I don't like answering questions with like conversation like i don't know why this podcast is easy for me to answer questions maybe it's because they're so like out of like actual substance questions and stuff but i'm really bad at just yeah staying engaged with people like having small conversation with me i'm really bad at staying engaged in it and it's and it's a fault of mine i i don't not sure i i'm not talking about it in a proud manner i'm actually kind of like annoyed by myself because I know people are just trying to be pleasant and I shut them down because I'm like, what, what is your point? What is your point? And I'm looking for a point to everything. What a realization. Yeah. Uh, Good. That's some good work today, Jeff. I think our hour's up. (laughs) (laughs) Have you come back next week now? Now why? Now why? So I want you to go to, I want you to go to the nurse practitioner, psychologist, and be like, now my podcast uh, co-worker uh, was saying co-worker. this about psychology. Um, your thoughts on that? <laughs> They're like, what the hell? What are you talking about? I'd like to bring them in on this. Um, can we can we do this live and have you be our first guest? Can we have your psychologist be our first guest? <laughs> I'm not sure that they, they oh, that, yeah, agree to such things. Um. How if I write? I'll do a quick hot wreck then. Uh, have you seen Tasha's new podcast? It's had like four or five episodes. Daniel Tosh? Yeah. No. It's it's really good. So he did his whole concept. He doesn't want to bring on comedians and other famous people because he's kind of annoyed by it, um, which is kind of funny. But he brings on people in his life, like his dog walker, his wife's gynecologist, his personal trainer, like people in his real life, and he asks them questions and talks. It's, like, it's really good. It's hilarious. Really? He's himself, but it's like yeah. I recommend it. It's a YouTube deal. So he's still himself. Um, still hilarious, but it's actually really fascinating <laughs> to like talk to regular people like uh, in from regular life. Um, like That's us, good. you know, we're just a couple regular guys. See, and I, I think it'd be really to, neat for us t- to have guests, but that would have to be very structured. That's my fear of yeah. having guests. I have had people that have like, yo, I'd love to be on the show if you ever have guests. I'm like, great, but I have to wait until that's, we have to have like a, a, a definitive structure for a guest to appear. Like it has to be a, it has to be a special segment that's highly structured so that any guest can be successful. Oh yeah. We can make that happen. I think we can do that. I actually would like to do that as well this year. Um, my, only, my worry is like the tech side of it too. And like getting somebody to like, yeah, have, I know that you have to audio, not that ours is perfect, but Mm-mm. Wouldn't want to, you know, someone with a mic and headphones, at least the basics. Um, but yeah, yeah I, I think- mean, listen to that. I say when people have guests on, on like the Manning cast, that's, that's shown to like millions and millions of homes and their tech is terrible. Like they'll have people with horrible sure. audio. They get booted from the, from it, from the feed. It's actually a comically bad that the product is that, that chat like crappy. So I'm okay with the audio for that individual if they're coming in and they're talking through like a computer speaker. As long as there's not bullshit in the background, I think it's kind of funny that our voices would be clear and and fine and the other people would maybe <laughs> even be on like a telephone or uh, a crappy computer speaker. A telephone. Look at you. Let's dial them in. Um, yeah. All right. Let's do it. Let's uh, um, um, maybe like once a month. Or may- maybe once a quarter, we could start here. <laughs> Quarterly, the quarterly invite. Mm-hmm. Get a few people. The try monthly. Like some people close to us. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I like the idea of like, yeah, that person like sharing more stories about whoever they're closest to, that kind of deal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so we take what we've learned in this year about each other, and then we really grill the other person, <laughs> the guest, about it. Right. So, I think he's lying about this. What, Please answer. Right. Um, so yeah, that's the best part is that kind of the other person could be the kind of interviewer. Like if it was someone from more directly through my life, you would be the one really running the, yeah. the interview. And if it was someone more from your uh-huh. life, I'd run the interview. They have to bring a story. And then the person who the story is about can either refute any portions of it. It's like a nice, it's like a friendly trial. They can refute portions of it or give their own spin on the story. (laughs) Once that comes to play, give their opinions on it. So yeah, hopefully we can get a lot of deception, uh, like kind of like real uh, deception in the ranks and we can get a lot of like, uh, you know, we can really break a lot of relationships and get to turn people against each other. And I think it could be a really <laughs> yeah. good time. <laughs> Dude, we're really going to hate each other after this. No, yeah, not us and us. We're going to ruin the relationships we have with these individuals because we're oh, going to pit okay. each other against right. them. Good, good, good. Yep. So like you said, we'll friends, see. family members, we're going to get the real, <laughs> the real close people first so we can ruin those relationships. And then we'll ruin less and less important relationships as we move along. Mm-hmm. Pod before all. Yep, exactly. It's, this ends with Matt and Jeff only having each other because they've ruined every other relationship <laughs> in their lives. And the oh, irony is, is the pod was to bring it them close does. together, but it was at the expense of what? At what expense? <laughs> yes, but at what expense? <laughs> All right, perfect. It's really funny minutes. to me. I just looked over. For what? some reason, I just pulled up Ask Reddit when we were talking about it. And the question on there was, soda drinkers, what's your favorite soda? Like, only soda drinkers can drink. If you're not a soda drink, don't even think about it. I will not accept if you only have and, one Dr. Pepper a year. And I'll you know. Love it? And damn it, I'll know. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll be know. able to tell. Like, but also, why do Who you cares, care? Though? Stop it. Stop. <laughs> it's going to be a list of every soda that ever existed. <laughs> right. Like, or it could also, be one of those fancy sodas. But that's the problem, yeah. is right. People are going to be pretentious and try to be like, I'm going to name a drink that no one's had. It's like great. I know. Like some kind of local rip beer. Oh yeah. Squirt. Hell. Wild cherry Pepsi is like cracked to my brain. It must it better be. <laughs> it's like Yeah. Who? I doubt right. it. Anyways. And you know um, that yeah. person drinks a wild cherry Pepsi like once every month. Like maybe. Or they haven't had or they're like, I love it. Man, it's probably been like three years since I've had it. What? <laughs> that I'm confused. But, um, all right. All right. Well, 30 minutes in 30 minutes deep. Not bad. Next week is, uh, well, we finish out our year the structure. We'll go for structure next week. Stream. Pam. Sorry, stream. Wow. Damn. Nailed it. It's weird how the internet just cut out while I was trying to say strange fam. Yeah. It was weird how that happened. It was, it wasn't me. It wasn't me farting. That wasn't me. Anyways, uh, hey, thanks everybody. Have a good day. Uh, this is the theme song definitely working. One, two, three. It's working. It's working. You're doing it, Peter.